Scoot Henderson has played in a total of 41 games so far this year. And in this video, we're going to do a deep dive on Scoot's film and stats to see exactly where his game's at right now. Now before we get into the breakdown, I first want to mention that I feel like fans and media alike can be very quick to sum up NBA rookies. You'll commonly see TV hosts or podcasters declaring a rookie a bust after just half an NBA season. But the truth is it takes multiple years for a young player to fully develop. And that's especially the case for rookie guards like Scoot Henderson who just turned 20 years old. So as I go through this breakdown, keep in mind that many of Scoot's current weaknesses will most likely get cleaned up with more NBA reps and experience. Now coming into the league, we all knew that Scoot's outside shooting was going to be a work in progress. His mid-range and three-point numbers with the G League Ignite were nothing to write home about and those shooting numbers are pretty much the same this year. But what made Scoot a clear-cut top 3 pick in the draft was simply his ability to put pressure on the rim. Scoot has elite fiscal tools of being quick, explosive, while having a pretty built-up fiscal frame for his age. Many people, including me, thought that Henderson would have instant impact as a downhill driver and paint scorer just from his fiscal tools alone. But so far this year, that hasn't been the case. Scoot's overall field goal percentages at the rim just simply aren't good. When watching these clips, it's pretty clear that Scoot's not comfortable finishing in or around length. When Scoot is forced to slow down and probe in the half court, I think he has a hard time building up and generating those big explosions towards the rim which causes him to constantly get stonewalled by more lengthy defenders. Watch him here turn the corner off the screen, then jump and attack this big's body into a layup. But notice how he doesn't get enough lift off the floor, allowing the defense to simply stay vertical and get a piece of his shot. Now on this play, we again have Scoop playing in pick and roll, and watch how he snakes it back in towards his left then picks up into a euro step back across the middle. But again, notice how he doesn't get enough lift off the floor, allowing this big to easily slide across and eliminate his shot. Now compare those clips to these right here, where Scoot now has the space to pick up a head of steam and explode to the rim. Now when Chauncey Billups talks about that guy, Scoot Henderson. Right here, you'll see Scoot's man get caught gambling. And right off the catch, notice how he has all this open space to work with. And from this spot, the weak side defense has no chance of stopping Scoot once he picks up momentum. You'll see Nikola Jokic on this play come up and meet Henderson at the level of the screen. And Scoot from here is just going to simply turn on the Jets and get the outside angle. And when no one in help fully commits over to take away Scoot's lane, he's able to rise up into a finish. You'll see the defense here have a quick miscommunication, giving Scoot this runway to pick up ahead of steam. And watch how Henderson is able to get the defense leaning by pushing the ball to his right hand, to then quickly change direction back left with this overcross. And Portland will commonly run some actions designed to let Scoot pick up some momentum off the catch. You'll see Scoot here toss the ball to the slot to then pick up a head of steam and blast off his handoff. And he's able to stride his way into a foul. Henderson also finds some success playing off the ball and attacking off the catch. He doesn't really draw heavy closeouts because the defense doesn't respect him yet as an outside shooter but he is pretty good at both attacking into open space and reading angles on the catch. Watch him here shift across the top of the key to then rip back into the defense's gravity and lower his shoulder into contact and draw the foul. This is a nice move right here where Scoot catches with this bladed stance selling the left hand drive but watch how he flows into this crossover going towards the middle giving himself a clear driving lane. So overall, I think Scoot is a very effective driver and finisher when he's able to pick up ahead of steam with the ball. But he does run into some problems when he has to create from a standstill. 
or attack against a set defense. Again, from the film I've seen, length and traffic does give Henderson some real problems. Now one thing I do think Scoot does very well statistically is generate fouls. Per 36 minutes, Scoot is attempting over 6 free throws, and this is where his physical tools become a major factor. Being able to use that physicality in the deep paint to create contact and generate fouls. When we look at all the best scores throughout the league, pretty much all of them create free throws in super high volume. And I think Scoot already has the natural talent to put pressure on the rim and get himself to the free throw line. But I think in order for Scoot to take any major steps forward as a player, he's going to have to find ways to be more efficient at the rim. I do think Scoot has plenty of talent and natural ability to one day get there, but it's going to be a work in progress. Now if Scoot can get the defense to respect him as a downhill driver, that in return will open up his playmaking. You'll see him here get the switch against Jokic, and as he starts attacking, notice how he pulls the help side defense deep in gap, which opens up this routine kickout pass for a 3. I also think Henderson is a pretty good passer out of pick and roll. Being able to hit both these low pocket passes, as well as these lobs above the rim. But again, all these passing options stem from defenses respecting Scoot as a score. Watch him here aggressively turn the corner and pull the straw big man towards him, which then opens up this backside lob. Now, when extending out and looking at Scoot's mid-range scoring, this is another part of his game that I do think he has to work on. Because right now, Scoot does have the tools to generate these in-between looks. First, teams are primarily worried about taking away Scoot's deep paint scoring, and he's able to leverage that threat to easily work his way to spots and rise up for pull-ups. On this play, you'll see Scoot working off these staggered screens, and notice how much of a cushion the Bucks give him off these screens, allowing him to effortlessly step into a 15-foot jumper. And even if defenses decide to play a more aggressive coverage, Scoot still has the physical tools to work to spots and create jumpers. You'll see Alex Caruso here jump over the screen and get into Henderson's body. But watch how Scoot is able to absorb that contact and work Alex down below the free throw line to then flow into this fadeaway. But like I previously mentioned, the biggest issue for Scoot is that he's not very accurate with these shots, and teams right now can get away with giving him a cushion and allowing him to consistently step into these mid-range looks with no worry. And Scoot has the same issues with his 3-point shooting, where again, teams are comfortable giving him space and letting him rise up into wide open jumpers. Last six shots. Now to sum things up, it's pretty clear that Scoot Henderson has a lot to work on, but I also think it's way too early to even consider him being a bust. We just simply have to see how his game pans out over the next few years. If you want to support this channel directly, feel free to check out my Patreon for exclusive breakdowns. But regardless, I still appreciate you stopping by, and I'll see you on the next one. The kids here.